This is the Sales Bible Podcast, episode 281, How Value Selling Can Grow Your Business, an interview with Chad Sanderson. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non-sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, Sales Babblers. This is Pat Helmers. And this week, I am in Orlando, Florida, getting ready to attend the Podcast Movement 2019 conference. It's down here in sunny Florida. And who wouldn't want to go to sunny Florida in the middle of August, the dog days of August? Oh, it's just lovely. Well, I'm here to polish my craft and to meet others who are on the podcast adventure like me. And I'm also looking to pass out some of those Abanero community marketing surveys that I've talked about so many times. And oh, by the way, if you haven't done that yet click on the show notes and uh, and help me out there. So I'm really excited to be down here in Florida and learn a few things that I can make this podcast, this Sales Babble podcast, a richer and deeper experience for all the sales babblers. So with that done, I'd like to talk a little bit about methodologies. You've heard of uh, Miller and Hyman, and you've heard of the Challenger Sale and Sandler and all those other methodologies that are out there. And our guest, Chan Sanderson, says that a lot of these methodologies tell you what to do, but they don't tell you how to do sales. So because of that, he authored something that he calls the Value Selling Framework, and it's all based around building a value prompter. Studies show that if you have a repeatable and a predictable sales methodology, those kinds of organizations are far more successful than others. So with no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Chad. You ready to babble? Absolutely. Let's do this. Hey, Chad, you and I have been chatting a little bit already. You are a podcaster too, right? What is the, what's uh, the name of your podcast? Uh, the B2B Revenue Executive Experience. So you and I are compadres in this, in this business of pretend radio. I... <laughs> <laughs> it is pretend radio. It's, 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 so, it's longer format normally than, than radio, which is, can be good or can be bad. Yeah, and we're not going to have any commercial breaks in the middle of this, I don't think, so um, <laughs> it'll be the real thing. I really appreciate you visiting uh, in visiting Sales Babble today. Um, what I want to talk about is something that you've that I've read about that you have called the Value Selling Framework. Um, that's right, right? That's what, I, that, that's what you absolutely. have, right? Absolutely. Yes, yep. absolutely. So um, I wonder if you could walk us through this Value Selling Framework, Um What's your background first, uh, just, just so the listeners get a, ch- uh, a sense of who you are? Yeah, interesting. So I, 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 um, I like to joke that I come from a time when phones had cords. Uh, and oh, so I've yes. been around a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, not too long, not too long. I, you know, I wasn't rotary dial, but they did have cords. Uh, I actually started my career in marketing, believe it or not. Um, got into that through, actually used to work for the American Medical Association in Chicago when I came out of school. And... Um, Got into marketing from there, and then about nine years in, got a um, got an opportunity to take over a territory for a company called Spatial, which is a subsidiary of Dassault in the CAD CAM space. Um, and I took over a territory because I figured out that sales is really about solving problems, and I love solving problems. The more complex, the better. Uh, and so, kind of had a crash course. Uh, of that transition from marketing to sales and actually was lucky enough when I made that transition to be trained in the value selling framework. So I've actually used the tools and methodology that we, that I now am, am, am selling and training organizations on. I used it as a carrying a quota carrying, you know, bag carrying rep. And then as I went and up the ladder and did, you know, ran sales and marketing organizations, um, we implemented it there as well. Uh, and so it's been a big part of my life for a long time. About two and a half years ago, made the jump into, uh, you know, I'm not real good at politics inside of large organizations. Yes. So decided it was time to join. Actually, the gentleman who originally trained me 17, 16 years ago um, asked me to join the business and, and with him. And so uh, made the jump and have loved every second. What, what do you guys do now? You guys do uh, mm-hmm. training? Yeah, we implement. So, yeah. So if we think about it like this, any sales organization, um, there's foundational stuff. There's, there's methodology, which then, uh, is brought to life by process and it's amplified and activated by the skills of the individuals using it or leveraging it. The value selling framework, 
uh, is our sales methodology. So um, some people would, you know, you probably everybody's probably heard of Miller Hyman or, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Taz, which is now Altify or, you know, there are methodologies out there. The difference between, in my opinion, and, and I've, I've been through most of them because as a rep, I was always looking, I was always looking for the silver bullet until I had to accept there isn't one. Um, and so I, the thing that makes it different for, from my perspective, it's, it's not about what to do, right? We all know, the steps, like there's certain steps you have to find people, you have to qualify them. Are they worth your time? Is are there problems you can solve? You have to sell them. uh, You have to close them, right? There's these normal steps in any revenue funnel. And so a lot of the methodologies that are out there are, here's what you need to do. The value selling framework is all about how you do it. And so when we deal with, and we look at the kind of the industry today, um, B2B buyers expectations have changed. And it's quite simply because we all live in a digital world where we all have, you know, mini computers and, and phones that have Amazon. You can get what you want, when you want it, how you want it. And we live these B2C lives where hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested in, in what they call customer experience, uh, brand loyalty, things like that. And that creates a frictionless experience in our B2C lives. Well, your, B2C, your B2B buyers actually live B2B lives or B2C lives. And so they bring these expectations with them into uh, into any interaction you have with them. So they want B2B sellers to be as frictionless as these apps are, as these experiences are. They want them to understand them as an individual. They want to be collaborated with. And that's a tall order for a lot of sales reps today who are used to, um, unfortunately, running in and talking about the features uh, switching over to stopping and asking questions to understand, truly uncover and connect to the buyer's perspective of value um, is, is a, it's a, not a huge switch. It's subtle. And the value selling framework is extremely simple, but it is a little bit, it's, it's simple to learn. It takes time to master. And so we have, um, we implement it for companies ranging from Adobe to VMware to we've worked with Google, you know, big companies down to, I've got a bunch of startups that we work with. Um, as well. And so for us, it's the change management initiative. How do we customize it for their business? There's online learning components to get them used to the the terminology that we use. And then there's a two day, usually two day uh, workshop where it's all participant centered learning using real accounts. How do you implement it? And then of course, reinforce it. I remember hearing some quote along the lines that doesn't matter if it's B2C or B2B that all sales is P2P, people to people. Yeah, P to P, H to H. Yeah, it's all it's H to all H. Hum- yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah, it's all human to human, and it's interesting because you, it, a lot, in my opinion, a lot of this stuff is actually common sense. And so, a lot of executives or salespeople, when they're looking at their teams, they're you know, and they struggle. You get to a certain size sales team, you can't manage to the individual, right? You have nope. to have something that's scalable that has yep. a foundation. Um, and what we don't do is walk in, and t- walk in and tell you what your sales process should be. Your sales process is your sales process. These are the steps. What we want to do is provide the methodology, the foundation for that process to make sure that your reps can activate it in a way that decreases the sales cycle because they, you're building credibility and trust. It is, a, it is a scalable, repeatable, simple, pragmatic approach to having a conversation and uncovering another human being's perspective, which is why, quite frankly, I didn't name it. Uh, and, I've, and I've told the CEO <laughs> this a hundred times over the past 17 years. I think value selling framework is, is a rough name. I, I, won't, I won't say bad, but it's, it's a rough name because what we're talking about is actually a communication framework. And so by having a communication framework so that you can consistently align with another person's perspective, you drive greater alignment regardless of whether it's in sales, in marketing, customer success, um, things of that nature. And so we've trained consultants, we've trained uh, marketing people. We, you know, it doesn't really, it says value selling in the title, which I think sometimes can scare people off. But what we, what we have a tendency to do. I don't see why. Tool. Yeah. Because it's all about value, isn't it? I mean. It is. It is. I mean, well, that's it, why it, there's it, an exchange. You know, we're talking about exchange of mar- it's a marketing thing, right? Um, yeah, it's well, it's uncovering the other person's perspective of value. Like a lot of organizations, I see a lot of organizations make the mistake of of getting their sales reps to show up and say, "Hey, here's this. This is this cool stuff we do." I mean, and you can understand why it happens. We we onboard them, we train them in our products and or our capabilities. We make them drink our champagne or Kool Aid, depending on what you prefer, and and then we release them. 
into the world, go forth and conquer. And so, of course, what do they want to talk about? They want to talk about themselves and they want to talk about their products where if they actually and they and they think going out there that, that they innately have value, but they don't. They only have value once you've connected it to a buyer's definition of value, to what that buyer wants, to the problems you're going to solve, what it means to their business and what it means to them as an individual. And it's a subtle shift that requires um, a discipline and precision to have those conversations in a repeatable format to uncover that person's perception of value. So why don't you briefly walk us through you know, the framework, this methodology that you have? Yeah, so let's uh, – because we had talked before we hit record, we started talking about prospecting as well. So Yeah, and I, and I stopped you and I said, um, oh, we got to record this. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so if you think about your revenue funnel, right, you, you have that revenue funnel. You get, Again, you got to find them, qualify them. Uh, sell them, close them, whatever. The value selling framework starts at about qualification. We have another framework called Vortex Prospecting, which leverages the same framework, same tool set, but targets the prospecting top of funnel activities. All of this is designed so that you have a predictable process so that all of your prospecting isn't done from your perspective, but it's done from your prospect or your target buyer's perspective. You do the homework in the framework to uncover their perception and their perspectives. So some of our, you know, it's not a silver bullet and it's honestly, it's not that complex. We use a tool called the value prompter, which I jokingly refer to as the Leatherman of communication. It's, it's, it's a, a, I'm sorry, say that again. It's the Leatherman of, of, of sales tools. Oh. It's one, it's, it's a multi-tool in one package, right? It's, it's literally just, um, six, five, five boxes on a, on a page that you walk through this conversational framework. And so what you do is you activate it by asking open probing and confirming questions, right? Again, not rocket science, open questions. We do, we ask just to get people to talk. Confirming questions is how you do active listening. Make sure that you're, you're hearing what they're saying, repeating back using their language. Probing questions is where you challenge their thinking and provide insight in a frictionless manner rather than making a statement we're asking questions, but we structure those questions in a way to provide insight along, uh, along the conversational chain. So if you think about it, if you, if, um, and I know we don't have the visuals up, I'll, I'll send you a screenshot of the value prompter. All right. Um, but essentially every individual in an organization has a business issue, right? So if you think about organizationally, there's a business objective. Like we want to hit, we want to go from 500 million to a billion dollars in the next year and a half. That's an organizational revenue growth objective. When, if you think of that kind of like a sheet of glass and it shatters over the CEO's head and the shards go down into the organization, those shards become business issues for individuals in the organization. Things that are time bound and quantifiable that they have to uh, resolve, they have to deal with in order to contribute from their role to that overall organizational objective. So everybody in the organization has a business issue and the beauty of them is they always change. And so once you get into talking to a CFO, their business issue would be different than, say, talking to a CMO, right? They're going to sound different. When you talk to each of those individuals and you ask them what are the problems keeping them from achieving or resolving that business issue, you start to uncover their view of the problem set. You ask them what their view of the solution is because you want to know what they think the solution is. And then through asking probing questions, you can expand their view of the problems and expand their view of the solutions to include problems and capabilities that only you can provide. And so we call that when you have a business issue, a differentiated set of problems and a differentiated view of a solution, we call it a, a differentiated vision match. And then from there, it's how do you quantify the impact of resolving those problems to the business? So that's value, but it's also personal value. What's in it for this individual? Why would they stand up and say, I want to work with this company? or I want to go with this solution. And then it's as simple as who else is involved? What other individuals in the organization, you know, do we have to talk to procurement, legal? Do I need to get IT involved? Is, do we need to go into marketing? You know, whoever, whatever that buying process looks like. And then it's captured in a plan, a step-by-step -step plan you develop with the, with the buyer that starts with the end in mind. And this is the key. A lot of people say, oh, well, here's when we got to, here's when we got to sign a contract or, or here's where we're going to implement. When in actuality, your plan should start from the day they realize the value that they said they needed in order to make the purchase. A lot of reps will just focus on the contract. They'll just focus on implementation rather than setting it up. So 30, 60, 90, whatever 
whatever the timeline is to realize that value, you have another check-in point, which allows you to then easily upsell an account, grow the account. Well, that's, that what, that's what I was thinking. This is the opportunity to, uh, to, to get referrals and to get, and absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you can, it, and it, it really comes down to, you know, people know, everybody knows, okay, get to the buyer, right? In any sales process, you're going to say, oh, well, who's the emotional buyer or who's the, you know, who's an influencer and everybody, there's all these buying roles. And we take that into account as well and, and talk through that, but you can use this value prompter to prep for a call. So all your questions go into the value prompter you, and it's not a technology tool. Uh, we have a technology version of it, but this is really a behavioral tool. So you prep, you can use it as a pre-call prompter. You take your notes in it when you're on a sales call. Then you copy and paste your notes from that into a plan letter, which becomes the living embodiment of the interaction back and forth with the prospect, be able to hold each other accountable. You can use it for persona development. We use it to develop um, prospecting personas. So what are the questions, what are the business issues that the people you're targeting are most likely to have based on their industry, based on other competitors and stated business objectives? What kinds of problems might they have? That then guides the way you build your cadences or your outreach or your content or, or whatever it is because it all has to be from their perspective to capture their attention. You can use it um, for intern. We have some customers that use it for QBR readouts. Here's here's how my you know here's for, how my for what kind of readouts? A uh, quarterly business review. Okay. QB, so sales reps QBR. Come in. Okay. Yeah, QBR. So sales rep will come in and say, hey, here's here was what my target was this quarter. Here were the the problems I encountered. Here's how I solved them. Here's some other ones I got coming up. Here's what the numbers look like. The accounts I closed, won, lost, whatever it may be. And here's my you know next step forward. It just drives alignment. It because so many people spend so much time try, <laughs> talking that they don't take the time to ask the questions and listen, which is really where uh, it, it's important to do that because that's where you're going to uncover the value from the other person's perspective. Right. And that's how you define it as a, as a method. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a methodology. It's a methodology. It's that foundational, you know, these are tools that you can use and activate in a process, but some of our clients have, um, you know, they'll take the value prompter and then when it looks like, especially services companies, so um, it, it, you get to a certain point where now they're going to have to scope out a large, uh, say, digital transformation initiative. And they have a specific process that they want to use to do that. Well, we can plug in uh, the value prompter and the information to feed. It's just kind of an input mechanism for that process. And so it gets everybody on the same page. We know, I mean, all the stats show, if anybody out there is familiar with gong.io, um, they do some amazing research, Gong Labs. Um, and they put out a study that I think, I think it was three and a half million sales conversations they have recorded. And they went back and did some analysis on it. And they found that the most effective, most performant sales organizations had only one thing different from those that didn't perform. It all came down to one thing. And that was consistency of sales behavior, consistency of the sales motion. Yeah. If you don't have a methodology to drive the consistent behavior, you can't achieve that. And so from our standpoint, that found, it sounds foundational and it, it often is. I've had, I've had millennials in class that, that, you know, are skeptics in the morning and by the end of day two, <laughs> the light bulb comes on. I've had guys that have been yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, this is, it really just amplifies what we do naturally and makes it predictable. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. So can we walk through what are the six, the six squares that you have on your value prompter? Yeah. So think about it. Um, so there's, th uh, well, four at the top starts with a contact because you're going to have a value prompter per person. It's not per account because everybody's uh, perception. Because everybody's going to be different. Everybody's, different. everybody's got a different role in a B2B space. Right. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So okay. the first so one is top. So the top is contact. What, who is the contact name and title? What, what role do they have? Yeah. Underneath that, you'll have business issue. What is their primary focus point that is time bound and quantifiable? It has to be time bound so that we can drive urgency into the sales process. It needs to be quantifiable so that we can then articulate quantifiable value. Next, underneath that, we have a there's a box that's called anxiety question. This is the way. <laughs> this is a. This is a. I, I, I'm loving people. this. That's why I'm. This is okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's really designed just to get an emotional reaction, uh, bring um, you know future consequences into the present for an emotional reaction because every we all know emotions are the primary driver for our decision making. So then you have on the left-hand side under that, there's kind of a banner at the top of the value prompter. Then on the left-hand side, you have a box that's called problems. These are the problems from the buyer's perspective, not what we know they have, 
right? And this is where it gets hard because a lot of sales reps, the minute they hear one problem they know they can solve, they, jump they don't on even it. think, yeah. they jump on that and they roll into solution or better yet, they run off of the value prompt to start calculating commission. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So we want to be problem experts. We want to uncover those problems. We want to share the insights. We want to um, capture their perspective on them with open questions, probe to add problems, co confirmation of problems that we know they have that they haven't mentioned that we can uniquely solve. Directly across from the problem box, you've got solution. And again, this is the buyer's perception of solution. What do they want? What are they looking for? And again, through asking those questions, we show them the capabilities or, or talk about briefly what we can do to solve those problems that we've already agreed exist. Then underneath problem, you have the value box. Open, probe, and confirm questions, specifically probing around the quantifiable impact of the business of solving the problems that we just agreed were there. Yeah. So now we can start to quantify the impact as well as uncover personal value. And then to the right of value underneath solution, you have a power box. This is the buying process, the other individuals involved, and then the plan. What are the next steps the buyer wants us to take in order to get to that date of value realization when they want to see the results? You know, we've got this thing in Word format and editable PDF, and we've got a Salesforce plugin and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, this this is designed to be a prompter. It's not designed to be a script. It's not designed to make everybody sound exactly the same. It's designed for consistent behavior that is also authentic. Because people today need, they want to buy from real people, and people are messy. We're often illogical. <laughs> We're often, we're often difficult to deal with emotionally. So this way, what we have is a consistent framework methodology that they can operate within, but still be themselves, bring their own personality, their own experience, their own insights to life in the questions and the probing questions that they ask inside of the framework. Excellent. I mean, this is a podcast, right? <laughs> Yeah. But I think you've done a really good job of audio. You've done a great audio description of a visual, of, 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 of a, vi of a vi visual diagram. Yeah. The other way to think about it is you just think about the way the human brain works to solve problems. Because everything we, we call it, I'm, I, I didn't come up with it again, we call it the value buying process, TM. Um, but, to, but literally, if you think about the way the human brain solves problems, so, and you do this in your personal life. Somebody will come to you and say, hey, I need you to address this issue and produce this type of results in this time frame, right? It happens in business all the time. The human brain literally naturally starts to go through, all right, these are the problems I've got to take care of in order to make this a reality. And then once they have this list of problems in their head, they start to think about, okay, well, what do I want in the solution? So when you have an inbound lead, a marketing lead come in, the person coming to you is already in the solution box. They already have thought about what they believe the problems need to be solved and why your business issue. So they're coming to you with a solution. This is why we see the stats about how far people are through their research before they engage with a, with a sales professional. Um, and then once they've figured out, okay, here's the solution I want. What's the impact or value? Is it worth it? Like, do, do I really want to stand behind this? Who else do I need to get involved? And then what steps do I have to take to get that business issue resolved in that time frame and achieve those metrics? The human brain just naturally works this way. The value prompter is reverse engineered from that buying process to give us an, a tool that we can activate that keeps us consistent in the way that we uncover the thought process they went through, help them expand their view of things through providing insights in the probing questions and driving them to realize the value that, that they have now admitted and agreed is there in order to buy, uh, to make the purchase decision. Uh, this seems like a really great tool. I love the idea. And I love the idea that it's a prompter. Um, if people want to learn more about this, they want to find you. How would they do that, Chad? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Can't miss me on LinkedIn. I'm a bald as a baby's butt. Um, Chad <laughs> Sanderson. Chad Sanderson with, with Value Selling Associates. Um, you can send me an email. be the easiest way. Just chad.sanderson at valueselling.com. Um, don't hesitate to, to connect with me there. Uh, any, every, any of your listeners want more information, I'm happy to provide it. And if anybody comes uh, to, directly to me, not through our corporate website, but directly to me and mentions that they heard me on your podcast, I'll, um, I give them 10% uh, reduction in, in cost of services. So depending on the size of the organization, that can be pretty, pretty hefty. Yeah, in fact, you gave me an example before the interview. 
Yeah. Yeah. I've had, I've had two uh, clients come through podcasts. Uh, one, you know, it was, a, it was around a 50, 40, $50,000 contract. So that's, you know, four or five grand. Uh, but I've also had a client come through that turned into just under a million dollar contract. So it, it saved him about a hundred grand. So awesome. <laughs> Anything we could do to drive value. <laughs> Chad, this has been fun. I'm really glad you came by and stopped and babbled here at, at Sales yeah, Battle. I appreciate this has it. Been, uh, this has been good. I've been, I was excited to have you here, and, um, and uh, thank you very much for visiting us. Absolutely my pleasure. What I really like about Chad's value prompter is how it focuses your thinking from the perspective of the buyer. Like, what are the problems that the buyer thinks that they have? Not what you think they have, how they see it. And then the other way around, solutions. What solutions do they think they should be looking for? Um, not what you think's best for them. I think it's really critical that you have your mindset turned around from that point of view, not from what you think's best for them, but what they think is best for them. Until you know exactly what they're thinking, you can't possibly frame any other kind of solution or any other understanding of what of what's a problem. Really good stuff. If you want to find Chad and to find his value selling framework. You can go to the show notes at www.salesbabble.com slash 281. And as he mentioned, uh, if you give him an email and you mention that you that you heard about him here on Sales Babble, you can get yourself a 10% discount. And while you're on the website, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Just click the Babble Me button, and uh, I will get right back to you quite quickly. And if you do think about it, if you could give us a five-star review on whatever app you're listening to, that really helps get the message out to everybody. That would be it would be much appreciated if you could do that. So with that said, thanks again for setting aside a little bit of today here. I, I really appreciate you spending it with us here on Sales Babble. That's all I've got. And so until next Tuesday, please take care and have a highly successful and a profitable selling day. <music>